Bank Union Church. Next week, Sunday, 21st of June, we're going to be starting a brand new teaching series. It's called Coming Back Stronger, and it's a series through the Old Testament book of Ezra, which we believe has a particular relevance for us at this time. It tells the story of the exiles, the people of God in exile in Babylon, who finally, after 70 years of waiting, uh, have a chance to return back to the land of Israel and reestablish themselves. And it's interesting how God sovereignly orchestrates human history to enable them to return. But even then, the process of returning home is painfully slow, probably takes over a decade for them to eventually find their way reestablished back home. So for me, when I first heard this story, it immediately made me think about my experience during lockdown. I think initially, uh, perhaps like a few people thought that it, it probably was just a temporary disruption. Uh, but very quickly, I think we all realized um, that it was going to be a painfully long process before we would return back home in a way to some kind of normal. And the good news is that we, we will go back to some kind of normal uh, at some point, but the, I think the process is going to be really slow. And the interesting thing about the book of Ezra is that even though God sovereignly opens that door, he allows for this long period of time in order to shape the people to prepare them so that when they come back home, they come back stronger. And so Ezra uh, tells us the story of how the people are shaped in their resilience in their purity, in their devotion to God's word, in their devotion to worship, in their devotion to the community, enabling them to come back stronger. And that's our hope with this next season in the life of the church, is that when we do come back, that we will come back stronger, that God will use this time to really shape us in our personal lives, in our family lives, and in our community and in our church. So speaking of church, uh, I've had a couple of people still asking about whether we will be um, returning back to gatherings, uh, religious gatherings, now that we can meet in groups of 50. I think initially when I heard that announcement by the president, I was so excited at the chance to potentially gather again in worship, but very quickly realized uh, that it may not be the most responsible thing to do uh, for our own members and perhaps not the most responsible approach uh, for the community as a whole. And so we've really just um, made the decision to wait and ask for your patience as we wait and discern and see. I think the decision to wait is made a little easier for a church like Rosebank in, in that we have about a thousand people who might want to come to worship on a Sunday and it's very logistically impossible to fairly um, cater for all those people. So right now we ask that you pray uh, with us as we journey and see what transpires over the next few weeks. Uh, but at the same time that the president made that announcement, we also here at Rosebank uh, launched our church online or our church at home 3.0 platform, uh, which was really our attempt at increasing engagement with the Sunday service. It's probably the best that we can do to try and recreate some sense of interaction around the worship service. So I've spoken a little bit about this idea of macro interactions and micro interactions that take place on a more normal Sunday. So macro would be the preaching, worship and prayer. Uh, and we very quickly took those elements of macro interactions to church at home 1.0 and 2.0. And this latest iteration has been our best effort to really take the micro interactions, which for me is that whole accumulation of little interactions that take place when you arrive at church on a Sunday. From the a parking volunteer who greets you, to the person entering church who nods in acknowledgement of you, to the, the warm greeting you get at the door to when you sit down in your seat and, and make casual conversation with the person next to you, till afterwards when you may be gathering with people that you know, sharing how you're doing and people offering to pray for you. Uh, and so all of these little interactions, they're not meaningless. The accumulation of them is part of the weighty experience of gathering and fellowship together. Uh, and we can't recreate 
all of that. But Church at Home 3.0 is our best effort to, uh, attempt at helping it be some sense of interaction and engagement with what happens on a Sunday. Uh, and so we started that a couple of weeks ago with our live online services at 9.30 on a Sunday, kids at 8.30. Uh, I, for myself, have just, it's been such a different experience for me to be the side of the camera knowing that there are people gathered in worship at that same moment. It's been a game changer for me. And I really feel that it could be for you as well. So if you haven't yet tried that platform, just go and just give it a try uh, and meet us half past nine uh, at golive.ruc.org.za as we continue to gather together as a church. A couple of other ways that we are still hoping to build community and fellowship in this next season. So we've got our ongoing prayer meetings. I just always want to give a shout out to that. that when you move to the Zoom platform, the game changer for me was the ability to go into breakout rooms where I've got to meet so many people at Rosebank. People at Rosebank have met each other. It's been just a real highlight of the week for me. Even the introverts are enjoying that. So if you haven't tried that, join us for our prayer meetings. It's amazing to me how that has become our primary gathering place, uh, which is in prayer, which I'm so pleased about. Then we also started uh, last week, Monday, with a series of webinars on the first Monday of every month, uh, really just helping um, to navigate life amidst coronavirus in some practical ways. So we had Dr. Nat Schluter lead us on the 1st of June in a phenomenal session that I've gone back to multiple times. That's still available on our YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, check it out and share it. Uh, the first Monday of July, we have Jane Kratz, who's chair of the Biblical Counseling Association for Africa, who's going to help us deal with fear and anxiety in the midst of coronavirus. And then lastly, we have a brand a new online learning platform that we're learning, uh, that we're launching. And uh, the first course that will be available is a course called Fathom, uh, which is a course uh, going through the depths of the gospel. So kind of an extension of the But Why series. And it's a way that you can engage and learn online at your own pace, at your own time. And there'll be more information on that in the weeks to come. Those are just some of the ways that we are still hoping to do church uh, in a meaningful way in this next season before we truly come back home, however long that might take. I want to close by just reading just one of the most important parts uh, in the book of Ezra. So Ezra chapter 3 is this very curious picture of once people, the first wave of exiles have returned and they've started rebuilding the temple. As some of the onlookers look, the older generation look and we read it, they, they broke down in weeping. They were so moved at this possibility of worship happening again. And the younger generation were just rejoicing at the hope that it presented. Uh, so verse 12 and 13. It says, many of the priests, the Levites and the leaders, older people had seen with their own eyes the former temple while it was still established, were weeping loudly and many others raised their voice in a joyous shout. People were unable to tell the difference between the sound of joyous shouting and the sound of people's weeping for the people were shouting so loudly that the sound was heard a long way off which is such a curious picture. I think of this season where there is deep lamenting and mourning and grieving and difficulty, but at the same time, such hope uh, and, and such optimism and looking forward to so much of what God is going to do in transforming us so that when we come back, we come back stronger. I look forward to being on this journey with you.